Hello. Today I'm going to give a five minute summary of Stephen Jay Gould's The Hedgehog, The Fox, and The Magister's Pox. So without further ado, the book opens with the analogy of the hedgehog and the fox. The hedgehog has one great strategy to avoid death, that being the quills on its back. And the fox has many clever ones, such as various ways to escape in different environments. Then we delve deeply into the divide between the science and the humanities from a historical perspective, which seems unrelated at first. The magister from the title then shows up as the dutiful censor who ensures that all books are free from heresy and the names of non-Catholics are inked out. It was this environment that science was born into. Science, as the young upstart in a world of knowledge, fought tooth and nail to gain legitimacy. In its aggressive push to establish itself, it butts heads, oftentimes with good reason, with the humanities. Gould spends a good bit of time here focusing on this conflict. He introduces another animalistic analogy, this time from Greek antiquity. The analogy of the bee and the spider talks about the appropriate method of understanding. Understanding in this case means ways to acquire and build upon knowledge. The bee is a simple creature that makes not but honey and pollinates in the process. The spider, on the other hand, is rather clever and mathematical and builds a complex and ever-expanding fortress of web. The analogy then paints science as the spider and humanities as the bee. This analogy was favored by romanticists of the day because spiders were creatures that brought death and corpses with their webs, while bees brought honey, sweet and light. The latter part of the book is a response to two essays, one of which was written over a hundred years after the first. Both essays focus on the topic of consilience, the idea of a jumping together of information from different branches of learning. The first work is Philosophy of Inductive Sciences by William Hewell, and the second is Concilius by E. O. Wilson. Over a great number of pages, Gould breaks down the idea of scientific reductionism and consilience in the general case. Reductionism breaks down in the face of modern genetics if nothing else, and consilience can be shown to work only by Hewell's original definition, not by Wilson's extended one where every single humanity is absorbed into the sciences with an increased amount of field complexity as one drifts further and further away from math, physics, and the like. Gould ends his book with a consilient proposition all his own, the idea of consilience of fields within a field itself, rather than as a branch relationship between all fields. This seems to imply something rather obvious. There is no direct connection from one field to every other field that exists. But that doesn't mean that information will all, always only be valuable by one and only one field. In the epilogue, we finally get an explanation for the title. The idea that one ought to pursue one goal single-mindedly and utterly determined, like the hedgehog, but use many paths and strategies to do so, like the fox. Gould shows an example of this as he shows the reader a page of a book that has been censored by a magister. The magister went over the page and dutifully marked out every single instance of the name Erasmus, which has been cited hundreds if not thousands of times throughout the book. However, due to the fact that the magister was required to blot out this name thousands of times in this one single book, in the overwhelming face of the task, he missed a single repetition. And so because of the author, writing as both a hedgehog and a fox alike, we can now attribute the censored quotes to Erasmus without any doubt.